chapter 6. And Jericho was shut up tight because of the presence of the sons of Israel, none going out and none coming in. And Yahuwah said to Yahushua, See, I have given Jericho and its sovereign, mighty brave men, into your hand. And you shall go around the city, all the men of battle going around the city once. Do this for six days. And let seven priests bear seven shofarot of the Yobalim before the ark, and on the seventh day go around the city seven times, while the priests blow with the shofarot. And it shall be, when they make a long blast of the horn of the Yobel, and when you hear the voice of the shofar, that all the people shout with a great sound, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall go up every man straight before him. Yehoshua, son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant, and let seven priests bear seven shofarot of Yobalim before the Ark of Yehuah. And he said to the people, Pass over and go around the city, and let him who is armed pass over before the Ark of Yehuah. And it came to be, when Yehoshua had spoken to the people, that the seven priests bearing the seven shofarot of the Yobalim before Yehuah passed over and blew with the shofarot, and the Ark of the Covenant of Yehuah went after them. And the armed men went before the priests who blew the shofarot, and the rear guard came after the ark, going on and blowing with the shofarot. But Yehoshua had commanded the people, saying, Do not make a sound or cause your voice to be heard, nor let any word come out of your mouth, until the day I say to you, Shout, then you, sh you shall shout. And the ark of Yehuah went around the city, going around once. And they came into the camp and stayed in the camp. And Yehoshua rose early in the morning, and the priests took up the Ark of Yehuah. And seven priests bearing seven shofarot of the Yobalim before the Ark of Yehuah were walking, going on, and they blew with the shofarot, and the armed men went before them. But the rear guard came after the Ark of Yehuah, going on and blowing with the shofarot. And the second day they went around the city once, and returned to the camp. Thus they did six days. And it came to be on the seventh day that they rose early, about the dawning of the day, and went around the city seven times in this way. Only on that day they went around the city seven times. And it came to be at the seventh time, when the priest blew with the shofarot, that Yehoshua said to the people, Shout, for Yehu has given you the city. And the city shall be put under the ban. It and all its belongings, it and all that is in it, belongs to Yehuah. Only Rahab the whore is to live. She and all who are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that we sent. And you, by all means, guard yourselves from that which is under the ban, lest you come under the ban when you take of that which is under the ban, and make the camp of Israel a curse, and shall trouble it. But all the silver and gold, and vessels of bronze and iron, are set apart to Yahuwah, they go into the treasury of Yahuwah. And the people shouted with the priests, when the priests blew the shofar out, and it came to be when the people heard the voice of the shofar, and the people shouted with a great shout, that the wall fell down flat. And the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they captured the city. And they put under the ban all that was in the city, both man and woman, young and old, ox and sheep and donkey, with the edge of the sword. And to the two, and to the two men who had spied out the land, Yehoshua said, Go into the house of the woman, the whore, and from there bring out the woman and all that she has, as you swore to her. And the young men, the spies, went, into, went in and brought out Rahab, and her father, and her mother, and her brothers, and all that she had. So they brought out all her relatives and set them outside the camp of Israel. And they burned the city and all that was in it with fire. Only the silver and, and gold and the vessels of bronze of, and of iron they put into the treasury of the house of Yehua. However, Yehoshua kept alive Rahab the whore in her father's household and all that she had. And she dwelt in the midst of Israel to this day because she hid the messengers whom Yehoshua sent to spy out Jericho. And Yehoshua warned them at that time, saying, Curse is the man before Yehuah who rises up and builds the city Jericho. He lays his foundation with his firstborn, and with his youngest he sets up its gates. And Yehuah was with Yehoshua, and a report about him was, was in all the land. Chapter 7 But the chosen of Israel committed a trespass regarding that which is under the ban. For Achan, son of Carmi, son of Zabdi, son of Zerakah, Zerak, of the tribe of Yehuda took of that which is under the ban, and the displeasure of Yehuda burned against the children of Israel. Now Yehoshua sent a man from Jericho to Ai, which is beside Beth Aven, on the east side of Bethel, and spoke to them, saying, Go up and spy out the land. And the men went up and spied out Ai. And they returned to Yehoshua and said to him, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and strike Ai. 
Do not make all the people toil up there, for the people of Ai are few. And about three thousand men went up from there, went up there from the people, but they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai struck about thirty-six men, for they pursued them from before the gate as far as Shebarim, and smote them on the descent. So the hearts of the people melted and became like water. And Yahushua tore his garments and fell to the earth on his face before the ark of Yahuwah until evening, both he and the elders of Israel, and they put dust on their heads. And Yahushua said, O Master Yahuwah, why have you brought this people over the yard and at all, to give us into the hand of the Amorites, to destroy us? If only we had been content to stay beyond the Yarden. O Yahuwah, what do I say when Israel turns his back before its enemies, and the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land here, and shall surround us, and cut off our name from the earth? What then do you do for your great name? And Yahuwah said to Yahushua, Rise up! Why are you lying on your face? Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant which I commanded them. And they have even taken some of that which is under the ban, and have both stolen and deceived, and also put it among their own goods. And the sons of Israel shall not be able to stand before their enemies. They are going to turn their backs before their enemies, for they have become accursed. I am not with you any more, unless you destroy that which is under the ban from your midst. Rise up, set the people apart, and you shall say, Set yourselves apart for tomorrow, because thus said Yahuwah, Elohim of Israel, That which is under the ban is in your midst, O Israel. You are not able to stand before your enemies until you put away that which is under the ban out of your midst. You shall be brought near in the morning according to your tribes, and it shall be, The tribe which Yahuwah takes comes according to clans, and the clan which Yahuwah takes comes by households, and the household which Yahuwah takes comes by men. And it shall be that he who is taken with that which is under the ban is burned with fire, he and all that he has, because he has transgressed the covenant of Yahuwah, and because he has committed wickedness in Israel. So Yahushua arose early in the morning, and brought Israel by their tribes, and the tribe of Yehuda, Yehuda was taken. And he brought the clan of Yehuda, and he took the clan of the Zarkites. And he brought the clan of Zarkites by men, and Zabdi was taken. And he bought his household by men, and Achan, son of Carmi, son of Zabdi, son of Zerach, of the tribe of Yehuda, was taken. Then Yehushua said to Achan, My son, now give esteem to Yehuah, Elohim of Israel, and make confession to him. And please declare to me what you have done, do not hide it from me. So Achan answered Yehushua and said, Truly, I have sinned against Yehuah, Elohim of Israel, and this is what I did. When I saw among the spoil a lovely garment from Shinar, and two hundred shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold weighing fifty shekels, I coveted them and took them. And see, they are hidden in the ground in the midst of my tent, with the silver under it. And Yehoshua sent messengers, and they ran to the tent, and see, it was hidden in his tent, with the silver under it. And they took them from the midst of the tent, brought them to Yehoshua, and to all the children of Israel, and laid them out before Yehuah. Then Yehoshua and all of Israel with him took Achan son of Zorak, and the silver and the garment and the wedge of gold, and his sons and his daughters, and his oxen and his donkeys and his sheep, and his tent and all that he had, and they brought them to the valley of Achor. And Yehoshua said, Why have you troubled us? Yehuah does trouble you today. Then all Israel stoned him with stones, and they burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. And they raised over him a great heap of stones, which remains to this day. Then Yehuah returned from the fierceness of his displeasure. Therefore, the name of that place has been called Valley of Achor to this day. Chapter 8 And Yehuah said to Yehoshua, Do not be afraid, nor be discouraged. Take all the soldiers with you, and arise. Go up to Ai. See, I have given into your hand the sovereign of Ai, and his people, and his city, and his land. So you shall do to Ai and its sovereign, as you did to Jericho and its sovereign. Only its spoil and its livestock you take as plunder for yourselves. Set yourselves in ambush for the city behind it. And Yehoshua and all the soldiers rose up to go up to Ai. And Yehoshua chose thirty thousand mighty brave men and sent them away by night, and commanded them, saying, See, you are going to lie in ambush against the city behind the city. Do not go very far from the city, but all of you shall be prepared. While I and all the people who are with me approach the city, and it shall be, when they come out against us, as formerly, that we shall flee before them. And they shall come out after us till we have drawn them from the city, as though, saying, They are fleeing before us as formerly. And we shall flee before them. And you shall rise from the ambush and seize the city. And you who are your Elohim shall give it into your hand. And it shall be, when you capture the city, that you burn the city with fire. Do according to the word of Yahuwah. See, I have commanded you. And Yahushua sent them out. 
And they went to lie in ambush and stayed between Bethel and Ai on the west side of Ai. But Yehoshua stayed that night in the midst of the people. And Yehoshua rose up early in the morning and inspected the people and went up, he and the elders of Israel, before the people of Ai. And all the soldiers who were with him went up and drew near. They came before the city and camped on the north side of Ai with the valley between them and Ai. And he took about five thousand men and set them in ambush between Bethel and Ai on the west side of the city. So they stationed the people, all the army that was on the north side, in its rear guard on the west of the city, and Yehoshua went that night into the midst of the valley. And it came to be, when the sovereign of Ai saw it, that the men of the city hastened and rose up early and went out against Israel to battle, he and all his people, at an appointed place before the desert plain. But he did not know that there was an ambush against him behind the city. And Yehoshua and all Israel let themselves be beaten before them and fled away by the wilderness. And all the people who were in Ai were called together to pursue them, and they pursued Yehoshua and were drawn away from the city. So there was not a man left in Ai or Bethel who did not go after Israel, and they left the city open and pursued Israel. And Yehoshua said to Yehoshua, Stretch out your spear that is in your hand toward Ai, for I give it into your hand. And Yehoshua stretched out the spear that he had in his hand toward the city. And the ambush rose quickly from their place, and they ran at the stretching out of his hand and entered the city and took it, and hastened to burn the city with fire. And the men of Ai looked behind them and saw the smoke of the city rising to the heavens. And there was no power in them to flee this way or that way, but the people who had fled to the wilderness turned back on the pursuers. For when Yehoshua and all Israel saw that the, the ambush had captured the city, and that the smoke of the city went up, they turned back and struck the men of Ai. The others also came out of the city against them, so they were in the midst of Israel, some on this side and some on that side. And they struck them until none were left, and none had escaped. But the sovereign of Ai they caught alive, and brought him to Yehoshua. And it came to be, when Israel ended killing all the inhabitants of Ai in the field, in the wilderness where they pursued them, and when they, all, and when they all had fallen by the edge of the sword, until they were consumed, that all Israel returned to Ai, and struck it with the edge of the sword. And it came to be, that all who fell that day, both men and women, were twelve thousand, all men of Ai. And Yehoshua did not draw back his hand, with which he stretched out the spear, until he had put all the inhabitants of Ai under the ban. Only the livestock and the spoil of that city Israel took as booty for themselves, according to the word of Yehuah, which he had commanded Yehoshua. Yehoshua burned Ai and made it a heap forever, a ruin to this day. And he hanged the silver and Ai on a tree until evening. And at sunset Yehoshua commanded that they should take his corpse down from the tree, and throw it at the entrance of the city of the gate gate of the city, and raise over it a great heap of stones to this day. And Yehoshua built a slaughter place to Yehuah Elohim of Israel in Mount Ebal. As Moshe the servant of Yehuah had commanded the children of Israel, as it is written in the book of the Torah of Moshe, a slaughter place of unhewn sto stones over which no man has we wielded iron. And they offered on it ascending offerings to Yehuah and slaughtered peace offerings. And there, in the presence of the children of Israel, he wrote on the stones a copy of the Torah of Moshe, which he had written. And all Israel, the sojourner as well as the native, with their elders and officers and judges, stood on either side of the ark before the priests, the Levites, who bore the ark of the covenant of Yehuah. Half of them were in front of Mount Gerizim, and half of them in front of Mount Ebal. As Moshe the servant of Yehuah had commanded before, they should, that they should bless the people of Israel. And afterward he read all the words of the Torah, the blessings and the cursings, according to all that is written in the book of the Torah. There was not one word of all the, that Moshe had commanded, which Yehoshua did not read before all the assembly of Israel, with the women and the little ones, and the sojourners who accompanied them. Chapter 9 And it came to be, when all the sovereigns who were beyond the Yarden, in the hills and in the low country, and in all the coasts of the great sea toward Lebanon, the Kittite and the Amorite, and the Canaanite, and the Perizzite, and the Kivite, and the Yebusite, heard. They gathered together to fight with Yehoshua and Yisrael with one accord. And the inhabitants of Gibbon heard what Yehoshua had done to Jericho and Ai, and they acted slyly and went and pretended to be envoys. And they took old sacks on their donkeys, old wineskins torn and mended, and old and patched sandals on their feet, and old garments on themselves. And all the bread of the provision was dry, it was crumbs. And they went to Yehoshua to the camp at Gilgal, and said to him, and to the men of Israel, We have come from a far land, and now make a covenant with us. But the men of Israel said to the Kivites, It could be that you dwell in our midst, so how would we make a covenant with you? 
And they said to Yehoshua, We are your servants. And Yehoshua said to them, Who are you, and where do you come from? So they said to him, From a, from a land very far off, your servants have come, because of the name of you, who are your Elohim. We have heard the report of him, and all that he did in Mitzrayim, and all that he had done to the two sovereigns of the Amorites, who were beyond the Arden, to Sikon, sovereign of Keshbon, and Og, sovereign of Bashan, who was at Estroph. So our elders and, our, and all the inhabitants of our land spoke to us, saying, Take food with you for the journey, and go, me, go to meet them, and say to them, We are your servants, and now make a covenant with us. This bread of ours we took hot for our provision from our houses on the day that we left to come to you. But now see, it is dry and it is crummy. And these wineskins which we filled were new, and see, they are torn. And these are our garments and our sandals have become old because of the very long journey. And the men of Israel took some of their food, but they did not ask the mouth of Yahuwah. And Yahushua made peace with them, and made a covenant with them to let them live. And the rulers of the congregation swore to them. And it came to be at the end of three days that they had made a covenant with them, that they had heard that they were in their neighbors who dwelt near them. And the children of Israel set out and came to their cities on the third day. Now their cities were Gabon and Kephira, and Beiroth and Kiriath Yearim. Yearim. But the children of Israel did not strike them, because the rulers of the congregation had sworn to them by Yahuwah Elohim of Israel. And all the congregation grumbled against the rulers. But all the rulers said to all the congregation, We have sworn to them by Yahuwah Elohim of Israel, and we are unable to touch them now. Let us do this to them. We shall keep them alive, lest wrath be upon us because of the oath which we swore to them. And the rulers said to them, Let them live, but let them be woodcutters and drawers of water for all the congregation, as the rulers had promised them. Then Yahushua called, called for them, and he spoke to them, saying, Why have you deceived us, saying, We are very far from you, yet you are dwelling in our midst? And now you are cursed, and you shall not cease from being slaves, and woodcutters, and drawers of water for the house of my Elohim. And they answered Yehoshua and said, Your servants were clearly told that Yehuah your Elohim commanded her servant Moshe to give you all the land, and to destroy all the inhabitants of the land from before you. So we are very much afraid for our lives because of you, and have done this deed. And now, see, we are in your hands. Do with us as it seems good and right to do it to us. And he did so to them, and delivered them out of the hand of the children of Israel, and they did not kill them. And that day Yehoshua made them woodcutters and drawers of water for the congregation and for the slaughter place of Yehua, even to this day at the place he should choose. Chapter 10 And it came to be when Ad Adoni Sedek, sovereign of Yerushalayim, heard that Yehoshua had ca captured Ai and had put it under the ban, that he had done what he had that he had done to Ai and its sovereign, as he had done to Jericho and its sovereign, that the inhabitants of Gibbon had made peace with Israel and were in their midst, that they feared greatly, because Gibbon was a great city, as one of the royal cities, and because it was greater than Ai, and all its men were mighty. And Ad Adoni Sedek, sovereign of Jerusalem, sent Hoham, sovereign of he Hebron, and Piram, sovereign of Yarmouth, and to Yephia, son of sovereign of Lachish, and to Debir, sovereign of Eglon, saying, Come up to me and help me, and let us strike Gibbon, for it has made peace with Yehoshua and the children of Israel. So the five sovereigns of the Amorites, the sovereign of Yerushalayim, the sovereign of Hebron, the sovereign of Yarmuth, the sovereign of Lachish, and the sovereign of Eglon, gathered together and went up, they and all their armies, and camped before Gibbon and fought against it. And the men of Gibbon sent to Yehoshua at the camp of Gilgal, saying, Do not withdraw your hand from your servants. Come up to us quickly, and save us and help us. For all the sovereigns of the Amorites who dwell in the mountains have assembled against us. And Yehoshua went up from Gilgal, he and all the soldiers with him, and all the mighty brave men. And Yehoshua said to Yehoshua, Do not fear them, for I have given them into your hand. Not one of them does stand before you. So then Yehoshua came up came upon them suddenly, having gone up all night from Gogol. And Yehua threw them into confusion before Israel, and they struck them with a great slaughter at Gabon, and pursued them along the way that goes to Beth Koran, and struck them as far as Azekah and Makeda. And it came to be, as they fled before Israel, and were on the descent of Beth Koran, that Yehua threw down large hailstones from the heavens on them as far as Azekah, and they died. 
There were more who died from the hailstones than those whom the sons of Israel had killed with the sword. Then Yahushua spoke to Yahuwah in the day when Yahuwah gave the Emirates over to the children of Israel, and he said before the eyes of Israel, Sun, stand still over Gibbon, and moon in the valley of Aelon. So the sun stood still, and the moon stopped, till the nation avenged itself upon their enemies. Is it not written in the book of Yashur? Thus the sun stopped in the midst of the heavens, and did not hasten down to go, hasten to go down for an entire day. And there has been no day like that, before it or after it, that Yahuwah listened to the voice of a man, because Yahuwah fought for Israel. So Yahushua returned, and all Israel with him, to the camp at Gilgal. Now these five sovereigns had fled and hidden him themselves in a cave at Makeda. And it was reported to Yahushua, saying, The five sovereigns have been found hidden in the cave at Makeda. And Yahushua said, Roll large stones against the mouth of the cave, and set men by it to guard them. And you, do not stand still, but pursue your enemies, and you shall smite them in the rear. Do not allow them to enter their cities, for Yahuwah your Elohim has given them into your hand. And it came to be, when Yahushua and the children of Israel had ended striking them with the great slaughter, till they had finished, but those who escaped went into walled cities, that all the people returned to the camp, to Yahushua at Makeda, in peace. No one moved his tongue against any of the sons of Israel. Then Yahushua said, Open the mouth of the cave, and bring out those five sovereigns to me from the cave. And they did so, and brought those five sovereigns to him from the cave, the sovereign of Jerusalem, the sovereign of Kibron, the sovereign of Yarmuth, the sovereign of Lachish, the sovereign of Eglon. And it came to be, when they brought out those sovereigns to Yahushua, that Yahushua called for all the men of Israel, and said to the chiefs of the men of battle who, were, who went with him, Come near, put your feet on the necks of, the, of these sovereigns. And they drew near and put their feet on their necks. Then Yahushua said to them, Do not be afraid nor be discouraged. Be strong and courageous, for this is what Yahuwah is going to do to all your enemies whom you are fighting. And afterward Yahushua struck them and killed them, and hanged them on five trees. And they were hanging on the trees until evening. And it came to be, at the time of the going down of the sun, that Yahushua commanded, and they took them down from the trees, and threw them into the cave where they had been hidden, and laid large stones against the cave's mouth to this day. And on that day Yahushua captured Makeda, and struck it with the edge of the sword, and he put its sovereign under the ban, them and all the people who were in it, he left no survivor. And he did to the sovereign of Makeda as he had done to the sovereign of Jericho. Then Yahushua passed over all Israel with him, from Makeda to Libna, and they fought against Libna. And Yahuwah also gave it and its sovereign into the hand of Israel. And he struck it and all the people who were in it with the edge of the sword. He left no, he left no survivor in it. And he did to its sovereign as he had done to the sovereign of Jericho. Then Yahushua passed over and all Israel with him, from Libna to Lachish, and encamped against it and fought against it. And Yahuwah gave Lachish into the hand of Israel, who captured it on the second day, and struck it and all the people who were in it with the edge of the sword, according to all that he had done to Libna. Then Horam, sovereign of Gezer, came up to help Lachish, and Yahushua struck him and his people until he left him no survivor. Then Yahushua passed over, and all of the Israel with him, from Lachish to Eglon, and they encamped against it and fought against it and captured it on that day, and struck it with the edge of the sword, and all the beings who were in it he put under the ban that day, according to all that he had done to Lachish. Then Yahushua went up, and with and all Israel with him, from Eglon to Hebron, and they fought against it, and captured it, and struck it with the edge of the sword, and its sovereign, and all its cities, and all the people who were in it. He left no survivor, according to all that he had done to Eglon, but put it, and all the people who were in it, under the ban. Then Yahushua returned, and all Israel with him, to Debir, and fought against it, and captured it and its sovereign and all its cities, and he struck them with the edge of the sword, and put all the people who were in it under the ban. He left no survivor. As he had done to Hebron, so he did to Debir, and its sovereign as he had done also in Libna, and its sovereign. Thus Yahushua struck all the land, the mountain country in the south, and the low country in the wilderness slopes, and all their sovereigns. He left no survivor, but put all that breathed under the ban, as Yahuwah Elohim of Israel had commanded. Yahushua struck them from Kadesh Barnea, as far as Azah, and all the land of Goshen, even as far as Gibbon. 
And Yehoshua captured all these sovereigns and their land at one time, because Yehua, Elohim of Israel, fought for Israel. And Yehoshua returned and all Israel with him to camp at Gilgal.